everyone, welcome back to Pages of the Globe. Today I'm going to be reading to you the short story, The Accident, by Murong Zukun. Now this is a very sh- popular Chinese short story. It's a very famous Chinese short story. Um, and it kind of provides an alter- important alternative to the narrative of modern China portrayed in state media. It's about a lawyer, Lawyer Wei, who is en route to meet his girlfriend when he hits trouble. Now, this short story was written in Chinese and then translated later by Harvey Tomlinson. So, um, you'll often notice that there are like phrases that might not make sense to you, but if translated in Chinese would be would make much more sense. Now, um, I'm going to tell you a few facts about the author, Murong Zukun. Now, that is the pen name of the Chinese writer Hao Kun, who um, was propelled into stardom by his first debut work um, called Leave Me Alone, a novel of Chengdu. In 2009, he wrote an expose of a pyramid scheme in, Zhang- in the Zhangji province, which was a first-hand account of Morong's personal experiences with the Pyramid Scheme Network that lasted 23 days. Later, in 2010, he was awarded the People's Literature Prize, which is a highly coveted prize or award in the literature world. He also has a microblog account with over 1 million followers where he has multiple writing pieces and he shares many facts about himself and a little kind of exposés into his life. Now in his accepting speech for the prize, Morong wrote a scathing commentary about his editor that he worked with for China in the absence of a remedy. He also launched into a critique about the state of censorship in China in general. The speech was then banned at the awards ceremony, but it made its rounds across the internet, and the draft of the speech was later translated into English and delivered to the Hong Kong Foreign Correspondence Club in February 2011, followed by a publication by the New York Times in November 2011. In the draft, Murong alluded to a wide array of censorship restrictions, including limits on discussing current affairs, contemporary personalities, and being forced to change the phrase Chinese people to some people in his part of work. More obscure restrictions were also discussed, such as the scrubbing of the use Henan people because it carries the air of regional discrimination. Now, I don't want to bore you too much about the facts of Morong Zhuanqin. So, without further ado, I'm going to move on to the story. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment down below which short story you would like to hear next. The Accident by Murong Zushun Out of the corner of my eye, I saw the motorbike clank over and skid a long way. The rider flew into the air, hitting the ground with a terrible thump and rolling over twice before coming to a halt. My mind went blank and I stopped the car. The rider lay on the road, not moving. Night was falling and a hubbub surrounding the scene of the accident. I stared blankly at the blood, flowing out from beneath his helmet, a gorgeous bright red, like Rosa roses in full May bloom. The guy was still flat on the road, motionless. I sat in my car thinking, Whatever you do, please don't be dead. Drinking after driving, making an illegal turn, if you are dead, then I might as well be too. After a bit, I got out of my car and slowly went up to him. He suddenly turned over, sat up, and inside his helmet tried to mutter and swear bewilderedly. Fudge you, what kind of driving was that? Sweet merciful crap, in my 37 years of life, I, old way, have had a few verbal bouquets tossed in my general direction. None of them were as welcome to my ears as that fudge you. It was like thunder from heaven. I thought, if this guy is still alive enough to swear, then that is just too fudging excellent.
The road was carpeted with celery and radishes. It looked like he was a poor farmer delivering vegetables to the city. Feeling calmer, I tried to help him walk a couple steps. That went okay and he stood up straight. Things were looking good. The only problem was I could see that his mouth was still bloody. I decided to show I shouldn't show him any weaknesses. If I was nice to him, he might take advantage. I had no idea what he might ask for. He slowly removed his helmet, and then I bellowed at once, Show me your driver's license. No one who'd cause an accident would dare say this, and I wanted to club him into submission. He still looked confused. He rubbed the blood on his head, looking at his hand, and then shakily asked me, What are you doing? This guy was more than 50 years old. His oils, his clothes were oily. He wore a pair of yellow rubber shoes, and his clothes reeked of pesticide. He didn't look too clued up about his life. I glared fiercely. What business is that of yours? Driver's license. He groped about for ages, then groaned shyly. I, yeah, I forgot to bring it. That was an advantage to me, and I poked his chest. Exactly. No driver's license riding on my tail, and you still dare to swear at me? His head dropped, and he tried to defend himself. You, you didn't have your lights on, and how could I know? Just then, I noticed a few people slowly coming over. I figured that even rabbits had been known to bite people when they were nervous. So why don't I just bung him a bit of cash and be done with it? Best to avoid any fuss. I helped him stand up to his motorbike, and the old guy lowered his head, shakily advanced a few steps, and then suddenly collapsed to the ground again. This time, he was out cold. I prodded him violently for ages, but he didn't come around. The crowd was growing, and a lengthy queue of cars had built up behind us. I could hear police sirens in the distance. I didn't like the look of this, and quickly rang, Hu Ho Shun. He was a very business-like, and asked me a few questions about where the incident had taken place and the general situation, and then promised to find help. I just then hung up when the cops arrived, and one of them asked me for my documents. I said in a small voice, I am friends with your commissar. He stared at me. Don't talk rubbish. Get your documents out. The old farmer was slowly coming around and breathing heavily. He said, you weren't. I was getting more and more worried, but then I heard the cop's radio crackle into life. If this was Hugh Kokshing, he was really on his game. The cop listened for a while, then gave me a hard look before walking away from the crowd to continue the conversation. He came back less than two minutes later with a totally different attitude. He said nothing to me. Instead, he addressed himself directly to the farmer. You were on his tail? ID card, driver's license, passport. The old guy's face turned pale. It was smeared with blood. His mouth was quivering. For ages, he didn't even seem to realize what was happening. The cop interrogated him some more and then turned to me. Lawyer, wait. Let's get him to the hospital first. He's hurt pretty bad. I groaned. What luck. But I never thought that the old guy would turn out to be incredibly stupid. He stood up quite suddenly and leaned shakily on his motorbike. Then he took his vegetable basket and tried to scoop up the greens from the road, dripping blood on the leaves. The cop and I exchanged amused glances. The cop said to him, There's nothing wrong? The old vegetable grower rubbed his chest. Hurts. The other weedier cop stepped forward and asked him whether he was willing to settle this and went on. You have no driver's license. You were on his tail and it looks like you hit his car. You have to admit liability. Do you understand? And he told me, you were at fault too. Your lights weren't on. I meekly admitted that I was to blame as well. The old guy was scared and he stammered out an apology. Sorry, sorry. I was laughing inside. Man, was I relieved. This cop really knew how to deal with things. He pointed to the part of my car that had been hit. Is the car okay? I said, It's hard to say before it goes to the repair shop, but the trimmings and the paintwork will need to be done, and that's at least three or four thousand. The old vegetable farmer's eyes widened and visibly seized with terror. He produced a pile of wrinkled notes. Two kwai, one kwai, and lots of mao. The whole lot couldn't have added up to more than a hundred yuan. 
He was so distraught that tears were flowing. I only have this much, otherwise you can take the motorbike. The old motorbike is only good for scrap, I said. Why would I want it? The cop had a few words with him in a low voice. The guy shook violently and then opened up his jacket and reluctantly produced a square plastic bag. Inside was 331, 100 note, four fifties, three tens, all folded into a small rectangle. With a faltering hand, he gave it to me. His face was running with tears. This is to buy fertilizer. It's all I have. I don't have any more money. I took the 330 and watched as the guy pushed his motorbike away. He tried to start it a few times, but he couldn't. After that, with one hand carrying the vegetable basket and one propping the bike, he went off. Blood was still dripping down his face. The crowd slowly dispersed and the cop advised me in a low voice. You want to watch the drink in the future. Got it, got it, I said. I owe you dinner. He didn't reply. He just blew his whistle and left. I got back in the car and was driving around the next bend when I saw the old farmer stopped by a small tree. His face was as pale as rice paper and his hand was pressed up against his stomach as he coughed and coughed. We exchanged glances, and then I looked away, as if nothing had happened. The transport cops will have to deal with this, I thought. Why should I go looking for trouble by doing anything for this guy? I stepped on the gas and continued on to Feng Shan Town, thinking that my girlfriend, Zhao Li, must be worried about me by now. The End Now, whenever I read this story, it always makes me really mad, because... The poor guy, the old man, was obviously not in the fault, right? Because this guy was drunk driving, he made an illegal turn, and he hit the motorcycle. And the motorcycle dude is the one that got the most hurt. However, just because he had more money and more power, he was able to not only get away with it, but actually take this entire man, his entire life savings. For something that he could definitely pay for himself. Now, the author has always been someone who's for social justice, and he basically is trying to show how corrupted China, or not just China, but politicians in general are, by showing how anyone with a little power can automatically become better than the most people, even when it doesn't make sense, and it's not ethically or morally correct. I hope you enjoyed the story, and remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment down below which short story you would like to hear next.